Hagakuri is a classic on samurai ethics, emphasizing honor, duty, and loyalty. Understand the meaning of Bushido. I have discovered that Bushido, the way of the warrior, lies in dying. When faced with the two options of life and death, one should choose death without hesitation. This is not difficult. One just needs to pursue this goal with firm determination. Some claim that death is meaningless if one has not fulfilled their destiny. This is a calculating way of thinking that stems from the vain, urbanized version of Bushido. When squeezed between two alternatives, it is hard to choose the right one. To be safe, everyone prefers life over death, trying to convince themselves with the reason of their own survival. If one survives without achieving a just end, they are a coward. Here lies the crucial point. As long as someone chooses death without having reached their goal, their death is free from shame, even if others may call it meaningless or insane. This is the essence of Bushido. If someone prepares for death every morning and evening and expects death at every moment, Bushido is their own path. Some people can rely on their natural talent for spontaneous decisions, while others have to rack their brains hard in bed to reach a final solution. Every man is born with a different measure of wisdom. One discovers wisdom within themselves that they never even dreamed of when they think clearly about their own ego and act based on the four vows. Even though everyone likes to believe they can solve the most difficult problems through serious thinking, it leads to values that are based on their own ego, resulting in nothing but evil and useless ideas. No matter how hard one thinks, limited people can rarely turn off their subjective way of looking at things. When someone faces a serious problem, they must first set it aside for a while, recall the basics cited in the Four Vows, and decide free from their ego. This prepares them against serious misjudgments. Recognize the limits of your own wisdom. One tends to try hard to judge every situation with the little wisdom they have and thus cope with it, which breeds evil, egocentric thoughts against providence and turns into vice in the eyes of outsiders. Such wisdom is dirty, pathetic and narrow-minded. Not least, it is too dull to allow spontaneous action. If no important idea comes to mind, it is better to ask a wise person for advice. The wise person, who is not personally involved, can judge the case selflessly and openly. Such a judgment is firm and convincing, impressing others and can be compared to a huge tree nourished by many strong roots. In contrast, a judgment born from limited wisdom is like a lonely tree in the barren teachings of a vast field. A man who is in harmony with his lord, Sagar Kuma, an opponent of thousands, had long given up his life. His heart was in harmony with his lord's. Once, Prince Sakio, who could not stand the lord, held a secret meeting where it was decided to force Kuma to death by seppuku, causing Lord Matsusige to lose the minister he trusted most. Kuma got wind of this, rented a three-story tea house on the Takuinu estate, gathered a bunch of ruffians and staged a noisy puppet show. Kuma even operated the puppets himself. The wild drinking party at Prince Sakio's estate lasted for days and nights. The intention behind this improper behavior was to discredit himself and dishonor his lord so that he could face the planned seppuku with dignity. Be careful with reproaches towards others. Making accusations. It is easy to find the good and evil in another person. Similarly, it is easy to criticize them for their faults. Many people think it is appropriate to openly give advice to others and give up if the advice is not accepted. This benefits no one because others are only exposed to shame and loss of face. Before giving advice to another, one must first determine if the other person is in a suitable state, meaning they have an open mind for instruction. Then become familiar with them so that they trust the advisor. Occasionally attract the other's attention by addressing their inclinations and other interests. Carefully choose the best time and method. Let the intended instructions sink in casually without directly lecturing. 
This can be achieved through occasional letters, farewell visits, or discreet conversations about one's own flaws and mistakes. True instruction lies in allowing the admonition to be swallowed naturally, like a thirsty throat absorbs water. The other person experiences a liberation from their faults after being first encouraged by praising their strengths. Teaching is a difficult task. I know from personal experience that errors, which are usually long-lasting, cannot be corrected through usual means. True greatness and compassion are revealed when the followers of a clan come together in brotherhood, correct each other's weaknesses, and strive to serve their Lord in harmony. How can someone achieve this ultimate goal if they only expose others to shame? Suppressing a sneeze in the presence of others is improper. When an unexpected sneeze occurs, rub your forehead with your hand from bottom to top, which is usually enough to suppress the sneeze. If that doesn't work, hide the sneeze from others by licking your lips with your tongue and hiding the sneeze behind your sleeve or hand. The same applies to sneezing. Sneezing and coughing often make you look foolish. There are many other things you must pay attention to in order to behave properly. Be an attentive guest. It is advisable to think about and note down what needs to be done the next day. The Lord would surely study the man he wants to visit the next day carefully, select appropriate greetings and conversation topics, and so on. When accompanying your Lord on a visit or going alone for a conversation, you should think carefully in advance about the host to avoid insults during the visit. This is the way to harmony between people and social courtesy. If someone is invited by a high-ranking man or a similar dignitary, they cannot be good company if they feel very tense before the visit. The right way is to be sincerely grateful for the occasion and look forward to the upcoming meeting with great joy. In general, one should not make uninvited visits unless absolutely necessary. It is very important for a guest to prepare for a visit by imagining the planned company beforehand. In a drinking party or similar event, it is most important to consider when to excuse yourself and leave. I do not want to see people bored by leaving too late, but also not too early, which could ruin an enjoyable meeting. Usually, too much restraint is inappropriate. If you are invited to a dinner and the host has offered the meal once or twice, it is better to accept the kindness. By swearing never to backbite others on the warrior's path, one also decides to make their military bravery known to all people on earth and be useful to their lord. This means instructing the lord in better clan management after being promoted to advisor. The duties of the son go hand in hand with loyalty to one's own lord. They are naturally meant to work for the good of others, which means striving to make all other men useful followers of their Lord. Be prepared for any situation. Military tactics and strategy are determined by capable and incapable men. The former are not only experienced, but also ready to solve every problem in a commendable way at the decisive moment. They are nourished by their unique study of various standards for a multitude of circumstances. These are men who are prepared for any situation. On the other hand, the others do not think about the possibilities in advance. When they solve a problem, it is nothing but a lucky coincidence. Proper conduct with drinking. One cannot be careful enough with their behavior. As I observed at various festivals, most men bend over nothing more than their drinks. If someone drinks when they should, it is allowed. At any other time, they look shameful and clumsy, and their daily mental habits and even their true character are revealed. Be clear that a festival is a public function. Always being alone makes one lonely. A certain elder follower preached extreme frugality in all areas of life. However, an old wisdom says that a too clear stream is avoided by fish. Fish can survive and grow by hiding under water lilies or other underwater plants. Only when a superior overlooks the small flaws of his men can they live in a peaceful spirit.
Vitality comes first. When I, Yasabudo, had a poem written on a rectangular card, I spoke about vitality and calligraphy with the following words. Imagine you would write only one word across the entire card as if you were tearing the card with your brush. Whether your calligraphy is presentable or not depends on your energy. All that is required of a samurai is that he feels full of life energy and not tired or negligent. Effeminate men, as Dr. Matsukuma Mai Nokan is said to have, in medicine, men and women are divided into positive and negative in different ways. Even a man's pulse is different from a woman's. However, in the past 50 years, this difference in pulses has disappeared. With this phenomenal change, I began to treat men's eye diseases like those of women because I could not make a successful prognosis with male patients. Those I treated with men's medicine made it clear that they had lost their male spirit. I kept this fact a secret to myself. So, most men today evidently have a feminine pulse. Only a few men really look masculine, making it easy for true men to surpass others with little effort. Spectators see more than players. Driven by the aversion to injustice, achieving justice is difficult. Continuously seeking justice based on one's own belief often leads to serious mistakes because the truth lies far beyond the reach of the judiciary and is hard to find unless someone is equipped with the highest wisdom. If someone cannot find the truth themselves, there is still a way to reach it by asking others for advice. Even a man who can never hope to attain the truth can very well analyze someone else's affairs. Just as it is often said by spectators in the game of Go, spectators see more than the game. Although a proverb states, always think alone to realize that you are mistaken, a difficult matter can best be handled by asking others for advice. Learning through listening and reading means following the wise thoughts of old men. There is no end to lifelong practice. An acquaintance who is a swordsman expressed his viewpoint in old age as follows. Lifelong practice has its various stages. The untalented will never reach a point where, regardless of the practice they undergo, their skills appear pathetic to both others and themselves. Their abilities are of no use at all. On the next level are the less talented who are not quite useful and are dissatisfied with their poor performance, yet they also recognize the clumsy actions of others. In contrast, the talented ones, whose abilities are usable and who can make every ounce of art their own, are proud of their skills and annoyed by the incomplete abilities of others. Those above the talented deceive with their ignorance. However, other people can still acquire their true abilities. So, a person can normally progress far beyond this stage when practicing any art. Beyond that lies the highest level, where one ascends to the very last sphere of an art. Once there, one realizes in the perpetual awareness of one's own imperfect abilities that there is no end to practicing an art. Thus the master lives their life aware of their imperfection never satisfied with their skills, not even on their very last day. I do not know how to defeat others. I only know how to conquer myself. Lifelong practice knows no end. Things of great importance should be approached calmly. A rule left by Lord Nao Chige in a writing on a wall reads, Things of great importance should be approached calmly. Things of little importance should be approached seriously. Matters of great importance should only occur daily in such small numbers that they can be addressed. This rule seems to advise formulating decisions on serious matters in advance and finally making the decision easily when facing the matter. On the other hand, if someone does not make decisions, their resolve can hardly succeed at the decisive moment. I believe that daily practice decisiveness is the prerequisite for the rule. Things of great importance should be approached calmly. A man who never makes a mistake cannot be trusted. Once, at a meeting, the possible promotion of a certain follower was considered. 
the members unanimously wanted to reject the proposed promotion because of the man's past drinking problem. However, there was something to consider. If a man is never considered again after a past mistake, it stifles talented men at the source. A man who has once failed regrets his mistake, acts henceforth discreetly, and is always ready to be useful to his lord. Therefore, such a man should receive an appropriate promotion. I believe in his reliable service precisely because he has failed once. On the other hand, a man who has never made a mistake is, in my eyes, risky. How to fight in a street battle A samurai was once forced into a fight but did not take revenge on the opposing side, thereby earning the contempt of those who saw it as a disgrace. To settle matters with an enemy, one must simply thrust into the enemy and be killed. This way, one's own death is free from shame. If someone tends only to think about winning a duel, they miss the right moment to act. People avoid retaliation with the excuse that they are outnumbered and only waste valuable time until they eventually talk about completely giving up revenge. One should confront their enemies, firmly determined to slaughter one after another, no matter how many thousands of enemies there may be. This enables them to fulfill their desire for revenge, and in most cases, they will themselves be the victor. Listening to others and consulting books. Listening to others and consulting books means preparing for the decisive moment that can come at any time. By practicing Bushido, one should be prepared day and night for everything. Be aware of the always uncertain life and think about which action in what form is appropriate in the decisive moment. Chance plays a role in a duel. The way to preserve oneself from fear and pain in a duel is on a different sheet than the mere question of victory or defeat. The former only requires the determination to never flee before death. If someone is defeated, they should immediately retaliate on the spot to match their enemy. This requires neither brains nor technique. A man of great bravery does not think about the end of a fight. He passionately rushes into the jaws of death where his true self is revealed in his mindset. Do not think yourself established. A man who thinks he is already established is unwise. A man who is satisfied with fixed opinions he gained through considerable effort has already fallen into a trap. Both men should strive much more first to attain a fundamental attitude towards skills and make lifelong efforts towards the ultimate goal without a moment of self-satisfaction with the little they have discovered. They should always consider their achieved results as unsatisfactory and not good enough and continue to explore the right path to mastery throughout their lives. The truth lies nowhere else but on this path of striving. Thoughts from my father. Here are a few things my father, Yamamoto Jinoeman, said or did. 1. When someone understands one reason, many more will open before their eyes. 2. A man with an affected smile is ordinary and cowardly. 3. Whether you speak at an official occasion or a casual one, always look the listener directly in the eyes. A polite bow at the beginning is enough. Speaking with downcast eyes is dangerous. 4. It is not safe to sink your own hands into wide sleeves when sitting. 5. Whenever I read a book, whether it was a collection of stories in Kana or a classic in Chinese script, my father threw it into the fire. He said, the court should read. Members of the Nakan family should practice military courage with a wooden sword in hand as a sign of relentless practice. 6. A man who does not lead a fighting group and is without a horse is not a samurai. 7. My father got up early at 4 a.m., took a cold bath, shaved his forehead every morning, had breakfast at sunrise, and went to bed at sunset. 
changes in values over the past 30 years. Up until 50 or 60 years ago, a samurai took a bath every morning, shaved his forehead, scented his hair with incense, cut his nails, polished them with pumice stone, and smoothed them with sorrel. He was very careful not to neglect his appearance. He cleaned his weapons and kept them polished and free from rust. Today, this special attention to one's own grooming might seem too affected, but it does not stem from any romantic idea. Ready to die in battle every day, young and old samurai were well-groomed because otherwise their dead bodies would surely be despised by the enemy on a battlefield, contrary to their wish to be prepared for everything. Even if this custom seems complicated and time-consuming, it precisely describes what is expected of a samurai. There is nothing special else that requires more effort or time. One remains free from shame as long as one is determined to die at any moment or already considers oneself dead and is seriously committed to both their service and the practice of military virtue. In the past 30 years, many changes have occurred. Whenever young samurai meet, they only talk about other people's financial wealth and loss, their household budget, clothing and sex. Without such topics, they feel tense. If someone chooses a good model in calligraphy and works hard to imitate it, their hand will initially be unsure, but soon make pleasing progress. A follower can also orient themselves towards an outstanding warrior. Although exemplary followers who surpass others in everything are very hard to find nowadays, one can choose various men, each excelling in a different virtue such as manners, bravery, speaking style, good behavior, loyalty and quick decisiveness. Students of all directions tend to imitate the unfinished traits of their teachers instead of emulating their strengths leading to no fruitful results. This also applies to a follower who chooses a teacher that has good manners but is disloyal and then imitates the unfaithful side of their character instead of their good manners. Discover the strong character traits of other people and follow them. This way, anyone, no matter who they are, can become a good example and teacher. Words of Encouragement When visiting a man who is suffering from misfortune to comfort him, the first word of the visitor is of utmost importance because it reveals their true intentions. A samurai who appears to be despondent and worried in any situation is a failure. He is useless if he's not seriously ready to strive for victory by all means. Therefore, a depressed person must be uplifted. Be friendly to visitors. Be friendly to visitors even when you are busy. Sometimes someone visits an office at the busiest time and discusses their concerns without seeming to sense the hectic atmosphere. In such cases, where officials often react grumpily and angrily to visitors, the samurai code dictates handling the visitors' affairs calmly and thoughtfully. A dismissive reception of visitors is only fitting for the lowly populace. An old veteran once told me that if someone is focused day and night on surpassing successful samurai and killing strong enemies in war, they can keep their fire of courage alive and prove their bravery free from discouragement. Even in times of peace, one should maintain this attitude. Educate your child. There are certain ways a samurai should educate their child. 1. Build their courage without ever threatening or deceiving them. A heart awakened to fear once will never leave the child until the end of their days. It remains with them as their essential flaw. 2. Foolish parents shy away, making their children fearful of thunderstorms, scared of the dark, and telling them horrible stories. By doing so, they commit unforgivable mistakes in child-rearing. A child will lag in development if scolded too much. 3. Do not instill bad habits in the child. 4. Pay attention to their language and behavior. 
a child raised properly can grow into a useful adult with an ordinary character. It is only natural that children of unhappy married parents will gain nothing from them. Even birds and wild animals are shaped by what they see and hear. Pay attention to your words. A man with weak conviction can easily be swayed by others to their side. During a meeting, you might sometimes hear people shout out, especially when someone is fascinated by another man who carelessly speaks about something he hasn't thought through. A third party will surely interpret such a word as agreement. Therefore, you must always be on guard whenever you meet others. When you express your opinion, you should handle the conversation in a way that prevents yourself from being taken over and be ready to reject ideas that oppose your own. Even in an insignificant matter, a seemingly overlooked detail can be a trap if you are not always vigilant. Beware of questionable friends. It is wise not to become too friends with a man of questionable character so that you are not taken over and entangled in his twisted thinking. Years of experience are needed to keep oneself free from such mistakes. Do not be a perfect technician. A proverb fits no one better than the samurai of other clans. Expertise is of lifelong benefit to its owner in our clan, but it only ruins the life of the samurai. A man who perfects an art is a technician, not a samurai. Strive to be called a samurai. Remember that skills can only help a man fulfill his duty if he understands that a special talent poses a danger to the existence of a true samurai. Fear no misfortune. A man who is always prepared for death can surely die a peaceful death. Misfortune is not as terrible as we imagine it to be beforehand, so it is foolish to torment oneself with thoughts of disasters yet to come. Never forget that the worst fate of a follower is still dismissal from service or forced suicide through seppuku. Recognize the true nature of good and evil. The setbacks in a person's life cannot be attributed to their good or evil. The rise and fall of a person lie in the nature of things, while their good and evil depend on earthly judgment by humans. People tend to see the highs and lows of others as consequences of virtue and vice. Look in the mirror. It is advisable to get into the habit of looking in the mirror to arrange your own appearance. After I was instructed at the age of 13 to let a forehead lock grow during my captivity, I withdrew to my house for about a year because my relatives told me that as clever as I looked, I would surely stand out unpleasantly sooner or later. Our Lord cannot tolerate clever faces. When people met me after that year, seeing me constantly improving my appearance in solitary seclusion in front of the mirror, they called me sick and weak. So I knew that my qualifications for follower service were now complete. A man with a clever expression. Others do not trust a man with a clever expression if he does not have a strong spirit within himself. His appearance is not a pleasant sight. A respectful, strict and calm man is best. Despise calculating cowards. Those who work for selfish gain are cowards. The reason is that a calculating person who constantly weighs gain and loss against each other cannot break free from this thought pattern, which is why he views death as a loss and life as a gain. He hates death, which makes him a coward. Educated people hide character traits like cowardice and greed through cleverness and eloquence, a disguise that only leads others to madness. Desperate Battles Desperate battles, or Bushido, mean fighting desperately in the throat of death. Lord Nawij himself commented that dozens of men sometimes find it hard to kill a single samurai in this wild state. One cannot expect a man of ordinary healthy mind to achieve great things. 
Only when he brings himself into an almost crazy, desperate state, far beyond reason and self-interest, can he accomplish such feats. Likewise, a man who is once hindered by restraint falls far behind others in practicing Bushido because Bushido requires no special thoughts of loyalty or childlike piety, but only desperate fighting in which loyalty and childlike piety can, of course, spontaneously arise. Whoever observes a master of his art and listens to him and then concludes that he can never match him is a weakling. Whoever does not feel inferior to the master, that is, to another person, and aligns his heart entirely towards mastery, has already set his feet on the path of perfection. Confucius deserved his name when he directed his heart to learning at the age of fifteen. Years of study followed before he became a wise man. A Buddhist scripture says that when someone is awakened to Buddhism, the teachings of Buddha already live in their mind. Pay attention to your language. The samurai must be prepared for everything to avoid showing the slightest twitch. If you do not pay attention to your language, you might blabber something like, I am afraid. In such a case, you might say, I will surely flee, that is terrible, or it hurts terribly. Neither in sleep nor in a playful conversation should a samurai allow himself to utter such words. If they are heard by an attentive man, he can easily recognize the thoughts at the core of the heart of such a carefree speaker. Therefore, always be on guard. Be decisive. An old proverb says, think sharply and decide within seven breaths. Lord Nyochige was heard to say that in seven out of ten cases, things executed hesitantly turn out to be wrong. From the samurai, quick action is expected. In everything he undertakes, a confused mind leads to no clear decision. A man without nagging doubts and with a fresh and high spirit can come to a decision within seven breaths, be quick-witted and determined when making a decision. Whatever talent one is gifted with, one cannot perform good service if not recognized by others. No one can hate a man who strives to be useful, who loves his service, works hard, and is always ready to work with his companions. Avoid promotion. Avoid promotion while you are young and serving as a useful samurai. When one is still young, it cannot bring fruitful results. No matter how brilliant a young man may naturally be, his ability is not yet mature enough to convince others. Therefore, it is better to gradually rise in rank around the age of 50. Surpass others by listening to their advice. The best way to surpass others is by sincerely letting them criticize your own affairs and asking them for advice. For most people, only their own opinion counts, so you cannot surpass others. A samurai who writes much better than I showed me once an official document he had written to another to seek his advice. The fact that he asked another man to review and correct the writing shows that he was already ahead of the other. Pure and simple, in no exercise can there be a stage where someone thinks they have achieved everything. Such a feeling of perfection stands against the practice of the way. A man who was dissatisfied with his results all his life, though he practiced wholeheartedly until his last breath, retrospectively achieved his goal to become pure and simple and to cultivate concentration. Pursuing more than one goal is a difficult life task. Pursuing a goal will never lead a person on the path unless it is done in a pure and clear mind. Move heaven and earth. Nothing is impossible in this world. A firm decision can move heaven and earth, they say. Some things seem far beyond a person's power because he cannot direct his heart towards a difficult project due to a lack of strong will. It entirely depends on one's mental attitude, even moving heaven and earth without applying one's own strength. Be humble. 
There are many who want to teach, and only a few who want to listen. Even fewer people stick to the lessons already given. When a man is already in his thirties, no one will dare to admonish him, so he tends to follow his own path and repeats his misdeeds and foolishness. Therefore, you must surround yourself with reasonable people and listen to their teachings. Listen and fear no mistakes. A follower who does not love his duty fulfillment in follower service is commendable. A follower who is afraid of a big assignment and asks to be released from it is evasive and unmanly. If someone fails a mission despite great effort, the failure resembles an honorable death in a desperate battle. Always be humble like in the first meeting. If all people live in a society in harmony and leave their existence to the way of heaven, they will surely live comfortably and in peace. A man who does not live in harmony with others cannot be considered loyal to the Lord. Whatever noble principle he claims for himself, those who stand poorly with others and even avoid irregular meetings or just talk about it will all be determined by their narrow thinking. Even if a man disagrees with another, a warm greeting is expected whenever he meets the other. He should be prepared to arrange with the other so that repeated meetings do not become boring and always think about a possible moment when a friendly relationship might be urgently needed. In this fleeting world where no one can be sure of their life, it would be embarrassing to die suddenly when others are thinking badly of you. One should not end up as a money-hungry monk or a crazy or extremely despicable and selfish creature. Do not compete unnecessarily with them. Stay polite and humble and handle things thoughtfully for the good of others, because this ensures unfaltering friendly relationships in every meeting as if it were the first time. In my youth, I kept a repentant diary to note my daily mistakes. Not a day passed without me writing down twenty, thirty errors. Facing this inevitable parade of blunders, I finally gave up the diary. Even now, when I lie in bed thinking about what I did during the day, there are at least a few mistakes that slipped into my words or actions, making me realize what an imperfect person I am. A man who is too taken with his cleverness cannot reflect in this way. Loyalty and childlike piety are shown by a loyal follower. In the samurai's house, doing his son's duty, as a proverb says, one should be thoroughly dutiful to their parents and regret not having done more for them when they have died. Since many followers naturally tend to exhaust themselves in the service of their lords, few care about their son's duty. Loyalty and childlike piety only show up when the lord and parents act unreasonably. When they are reasonable and well-disposed, even a stranger behaves kindly towards them. The monk, Gensei, secretly went to the fishmonger at sunset and then brought the fish, hidden under his mother's robe. His devotion and loyalty to his parents go far beyond what is usual. About Shudo Men often make lifelong mistakes because of Shudo, homosexual relationships in their youth. Nowadays, it seems no one tells young men about the obligations of Shudo, without which their integrity is easily jeopardized. Someone in their practice of Shudo is romantically connected to only one male lover in life. Otherwise, he would be no better than his professional sodomit or a prostitute, which is a disgrace for the samurai. Saikak is known for his remark. A young man without a patron older lover is like a young girl without a fiancé. A fearful man's love is never deeply rooted. He is doomed to abandon his lover later. If such a man approaches you, wisely reject him sharply and explain that he is invoking difficulties. If the other continues to ask what kind of difficulties, then say, How dare you ask such a question when I am still alive? If he continues to probe, strike him down angrily with your value. The older must be certain of the faithful heart of the younger lover. His amorous desires will be fulfilled if he strives strongly enough for several years, even at the cost of his life. If you maintain Shudo, never chase after women. 
Instead, dedicate yourself to training in martial arts the way of Bushido. Be stubborn. A stubborn attitude suits men under 40 better than intelligence and discretion. Even in their 40s and beyond, a man who hasn't developed a strong will can't influence others despite his character and position. Challenge the enemy impetuously. If you're determined to kill someone, never allow yourself to think, I might lose if I confront the enemy immediately. Instead, I'll choose a delay tactic. Such thinking robs you of the precise timing and diminishes your original resolve. The way of the samurai demands that you charge headlong into your enemy, even blindly. During Buddhist ceremonies at the Jisuin temple near Kawakami, a drunken page of a high-ranking man started a quarrel with the ferryman on a boat. Upon reaching the shore, the page drew his sword but was first struck on the head by the boatman's pole. Other boatmen rushed in with oars to beat the page down. The lord, however, turned away and left the scene. Another page ran back, apologized to the boatman, knocked down the unruly page and brought him back to the lord's residence. That night it said the beaten page had his swords taken away. The Lord is responsible because he didn't reprimand the rabid page or calm the boatman on the ferry. Then, when the page was struck on the head, soothing words were out of the question. Even if the page had acted unreasonably, under the guise of apologizing, the Lord should have killed the boatman with the first blow and the page with the next. The Lord was a coward. Do not abuse the dead. When a samurai remarked how sad that the son died so young, I replied, True, he was a valuable man. When that samurai lamented that in these days of decline, social obligations are completely discarded, I consoled him. As a proverb says, when things go utterly wrong, they'll turn for the better. Therefore, this world will undoubtedly improve. After his execution, Nakano Shugen was thoroughly bad-mouthed at a meeting in Commander Okisenobu's group house. Yobu reprimanded the men. We should not speak ill of the dead. People who have been accused should be pitied, saying the best we can about the deceased aligns most closely with the samurai's duty of mutual compassion. Only heaven knows if Nakano Shugen won't be rehabilitated as a righteous man in years to come. These precious words suited the old warrior well. Understand others to clarify matters. One should quickly understand others and act accordingly. With a quarrelsome man of strong will, you must yield thoughtfully and win his reason without sounding harsh or leaving room for anger. Mind and words should work together to resolve disputes. The Three Principles of Service the deep foundation of a samurai's service is generally to offer his own life to his lord. The samurai must first cultivate wisdom, kindness and courage within himself. To a layperson, it might seem impossible to possess these three virtues together, but it's easy. Wisdom, immeasurably rich wisdom, can be attained by asking others for advice. Kindness arises from working for the benefit of others, thinking more of them than of yourself. Courage means bearing your teeth and crushing adverse circumstances underfoot without cleverly overthinking the consequences. I know no better advice than this. All in all, service isn't difficult. Anyone who wants to be considered at least a little useful should think only of these three principles. Passionate Devotion there's nothing more important than passionate devotion in a given moment. Life consists of this flame that reignites over and over. The mind of a man awakened to this truth won't be burdened by pressing concerns or desires. He must align his life solely with passionate devotion. Yet, no one is able to fully realize this truth. Everyone keeps searching for other seemingly important things in life consistently showing passionate devotion and eventually being freed from delusion takes many years. Once awakened, you don't always have to consciously think about focused effort. 
passionate devotion in every moment, once truly realized, allows a man to stand calmly above daily confusion over trivial matters. Rationality is contained within this passionate devotion. The Trend of the Times The trend of the times cannot be changed. Society becomes increasingly corrupt and approaches downfall. Just as a year encompasses different seasons, not just spring and summer, the same applies to a day that changes its face every moment. Any attempt to make present society like it was 100 years ago must fail. We should seek to continually improve ourselves in line with the ever-changing course of time. People who only nostalgically look to the past are wrong because they miss this crucial point. On the other hand, those who overly value current fashions and neglect old customs are superstitious and unreasonable. Don't hesitate to ask the Lord for financial help. During my past service, I wasn't troubled by thoughts of my strained finances. If my family were without food, I thought, I could ask the Lord's entourage or the Lord himself for money. Years ago, when I had to depart for Kyoto to take up my official duties, I asked the elder council members for financial support. My household finances are severely strained due to my upcoming long stay in Kyoto. I would greatly appreciate considerate handling of this, for if my debt remained unpaid, it would tarnish the venerable name of our clan. The debts don't stem from my selfishness. They're caused by my official stay in Kyoto. The council members reported this to the Lord, who generously granted me a sum. Whoever has completely entrusted everything to the Lord need not worry about his own affairs. Thoughtlessly expressing reservations, on the other hand, complicates matters. Don't let yourself be struck down from behind. In a certain battle, things looked bad for Lord Ieyasu's army. Later, people supposedly spoke with admiration of his retreat. Ieyasu is a great commander of invaluable courage. Not one of his samurai who fell in the unequal battle was found with his back turned to the enemy. The mental attitude of these samurai was evident even after their death. This makes our present attitude seem shameful by comparison. Love in its highest form. The highest form of love is to keep your burning love to yourself and not even open your heart to the beloved person. Receive my consuming love for you from the smoke rising before my burning body when my life is over. Love that's revealed to a beloved while still alive isn't deep. Dying with concealed love is the highest form of love. Even if asked by the one you love whether this is the case, it's crucial to answer immediately. That's the last thing I can imagine. What a complicated path true love must take. When I discussed this recently, some men agreed with me, and we were called the smoke group. This philosophy of love applies to everything. It illustrates, for example, the relationship between lord and retainer. As long as someone doesn't refrain from shameful actions in solitude or secretly dwelling on base thoughts, he cannot appear pure and clear in public. Every moment is crucial. The present moment might well be the decisive one. The critical moment could be right now. People who see moments as separate things can't be ready in times of emergency. If a man were called to his Lord right now and asked to express his thoughts on a particular matter, he'd most likely not have a prompt answer. This shows that the attitude toward crucial moments differs from that toward ordinary times. Viewing these different moments as one and the same requires daily practice, even in leisure time, so you can explain things clearly when summoned before the shogun, the feudal lord, or elder council members. Even if you're certain, your low rank will never grant you the opportunity to speak in the lord's presence. This attitude applies to everything. Whether you're on the battlefield or in civil service, be accordingly prudent. If we analyze this deeply, we must recognize how constantly inattentive we are. Be prepared for death. Rich and poor, young and old, awakened and deluded, all must die. Death comes to each of us, 
and even if a person knows this truth, he convinces himself that he is the last one who must die after all others have encountered this inevitable fate. No one harbors a thought of the approaching death that can knock on his door at any moment. How short-sighted to think that if there is any secret formula for dealing with certain death, it lies in the notion that nothing one does can avoid death, that one's own life is nothing but an empty dream. Never be inattentive towards the shadow of death that skulks densely around your feet. Encouragement is better than sympathy. When thoughtless words of pity like, I'm sorry to hear that, are spoken to someone who has lost his presence of mind due to an unexpected misfortune, the suffering person only becomes more depressed and unable to think reasonably. In such a case, it is better to distract the other's attention by comforting him. You are lucky. It could have been worse, or similar words, as if nothing bad had happened. If he clings to such encouragement, the suffering person can surely recover and see things again in a reasonable light. In this uncertain world, one must harbor long-lasting worry or joy. How to settle a dispute Before negotiating a matter at a conference, the chairman should first discuss the case in detail with the person directly involved. Then, listen to the opinions of others present at the conference and make a decision. Otherwise, someone else might get hurt. It is also advisable, in matters that require serious consultation, to privately ask for comments from those who are not involved or who stand outside the ordinary mass, as they can analyse them reasonably, being unbiased towards the matter. Members of one's own group tend to take sides in favour of their own men upon request. Their comments are then naturally of no use. Gods and impurity. They say of gods that they hate impurity, yet I do not pray to them daily without self-interest. I was long devout towards them and prayed for my luck on the battlefield, where I was supposed to fight, rising over blood-stained and road-dead bodies. If the gods now look away because they despise my impurity, I must accept what comes. With this fate, I bow to the gods whether I am pure or not. The short life of my husband. The life of my husband is only a fleeting moment. A man should spend his life doing what he truly wants. In this short life, it would be idiotic for a man to force himself into something he does not like and thus spend his existence suffering. If this thought is, of course, misinterpreted, it is harmful. Therefore, I kept it to myself and never told young men. I like my naps. I think about them stylishly, and according to my current circumstances, I only want to stay in the house and enjoy sleeping. Appearance. The appearance of a person shows his dignity and is an expression of the depth of his character. His concentrated effort, cheerful attitude, silent pose, polite disposition, posture, gritted teeth, and piercing gaze. All this shows that such an external appearance stems from constant attention and seriousness. A man of low birth in a high position. A man of lower origin who now holds an important position previously gave cause for promotion. His virtue was worthy of his rise. If others do not want to work with a person of simple origin or feel embarrassed, serving under a man who was only a foot soldier until recently, they are unforgivably misguided. If the man of low birth, who has attained a noble position, is endowed with more virtue than the one who was already born into that status, the former must be respected more strongly. Respectful Distance a samurai must consider that the lord, ministers, and older council members must keep a respectful distance from him so that he can undertake something great. If these people completely loosen up in his presence and allow themselves to become, it will be difficult for him to carry out a great endeavor. Personal favoritism through the superior via relationships damages character. A man who is supported by personal relationships and favors 
cannot express his own opinion. Despite his years of hard-fought service, people will contemptuously say that he enjoyed special privileges because of his personal bond with the superior. This calls his entire service into question. Keep your mouth shut. Be careful not to make remarks that provoke resistance in connection with current matters. When there are complications, people tend to get excited and unconsciously talk about nothing else. Visiting someone. Before visiting someone for a small chat, you should inform the other about the planned visit. Otherwise, you might find the host worried and facing unusual difficulties, which would ruin the pleasure of the visit. In general, it is better to visit someone only if you are invited. Even if you are invited, a visit to a depressing and unpleasant meeting can end too often, allowing random meetings to have no calm conversations from heart to heart. Even from meetings for passing time, mistakes often arise. But even if you are affected by misfortune and worry, you should not neglect to receive visitors. Do not be speechless. If someone, whether drunk or simply talking nonsense, makes a rude remark in your presence that you cannot ignore, it is advisable to respond with a few words to clean up the situation. A man whose spirit quickly burns into anger is too impatient to immediately counter with an appropriate remark, feels cornered and draws his sword. Always staying silent is cowardly. The effect of appropriate words that must be uttered on the spot must be well considered in one's own mind. Selfish desires in protest. Shogun said, selfish desires are included in the word Khan, meaning open protest against the Lord. Such protest should not be raised in follower service. No one knows if he ever admonished his Lord, nor did he ever really convince his Lord through pure logic. He always influenced his Lord in silence. The old grandfather of Kasumar never requested an audience to register protest against his Lord. Usually, he seized a favorable opportunity to advise the Lord privately, where his words were gladly accepted because no one knew. The Lord's mistakes never surfaced. When one's own counsel is private, it does not count towards the Lord's approval. The follower must seriously destroy his brain to gain the Lord's approval through other objective paths. Then, he will surely become tied to repeated advice and, with his misdeeds, to the follower's path, to stand stronger to protect the Lord's mistakes from becoming known in public. Don't fail through life. Everyone fails sometimes due to impatience in a great undertaking. Always think that the time is not yet come, and you can see how your burning desires materialize much earlier than expected. That is, in due time, imagine how things will look in 15 years. The world may have been drastically changed. In this gradually deteriorating world, people lose their abilities over time, and silver is replaced by gold as treasure. When gold reserves are exhausted, or copper replaces silver when all silver is gone, relentless effort from this moment can make someone a useful man in 15 years. What is nothing but a fleeting moment in a dream, as long as someone carefully attends to his health, he may perhaps see his long-held dream of service as a useful follower to the Lord come true. If the world is full of outstanding men, it is hard to surpass others. During an era in which everything decays, it is much easier to be someone significant. The Story of My Life I was born when my father was already 70 years old. He always said it wouldn't bother him to sell me to a salt merchant or someone else as Takuso. He heard my father, Lord Katsuig, always tells me that you even practice in your follower service when you are not being watched by others. Your loyal service will surely appear useful to your descendants to the Lord. Then he called me Matsukame, after which... Idayoshi Risemon kindly appointed Hakamatu Keritusam to me. At the age of nine, I was called as a young man to lord with Kuzusige and assigned the name Fu. When I also served Prince Tunashige, I liked jumping onto his fire pit with a blanket. 
letting myself be carried on his back and causing all sorts of nonsense. In everyone's eyes, I was a real rascal. When I became thirteen, Lord Mitakusige ordered the initiation rite for me. After a year of self-imposed restriction in my house, I reported myself on May 1st of the following year as a squire under the new name Ichiu. Humiliated by those who looked down on me as a samurai of low rank, I tried since day and night to find out how I could best strive in my service. At that time, I visited the residence of Godoemon to listen to his speeches every night. One night, he said, The old men claim that those attracted by fame and wealth are not followers, nor are those who are not attracted to them, but no one would seriously think. When I looked hard after Dar's effort, I suddenly saw my path open before me. Sun's instruction taught me that the highest service of a follower is always to speak before the Lord for the protection of the clan and to win a ministerial post for this purpose instead of remaining low in the hierarchy. Convinced that one should seek progress not for personal fame and wealth, but for the benefit of one's highest service, I decided to become a minister. A man who was promoted to a high post in his youth later always proved ineffective, so I worked day and night and finally settled in my fifties, shedding yellow tears, if not blood tears, despite my deep efforts I died. The Lord, before I had held the post of minister, those who had already been promoted to the highest ranks dishonoured his name, after which I was called what I am now. While on one hand, I could not fulfil my greatest wish to serve as a minister, on the other hand, my years of hard effort towards the goal were comparable to the final fulfilment. It is true, if a man sets a goal, he can achieve it. Those who took care of the deceased Lord and who were punished after his death had caused the punishment themselves because they acted out of self-deception. Even if the story of my life sounds paradoxical, unfathomable fate has guided me through my life. I reveal it to you today in the silence of the mountain. Envious Followers once there was a newcomer among those who stood close to Lord Nao Shig, who was particularly favoured. Older followers asked for an audience with the Lord. They said to him, Lord, it seems that you particularly care for the son whom we did not see on the battlefield and heard nothing about his usefulness. Could you tell us the reasons why this man is in your service and why he is favoured by you? You are right, explained the Lord. This man is not useful in times of battle, but I have taken a liking to him. I feel reassured when I assign him to lowly tasks. I cannot ask experienced followers like you to perform such lowly tasks. I depend on you in times of war. A Brave Follower Who Became a Bandit The impoverished Saitono Suk one day had no money left for rice, which his wife lamented. Upon hearing her concern, Jonuk left the house with his swords in hand and said, Although you are a woman, you have a limited mind. You lose your heart over something trivial like the desire for rice. There is rice everywhere for us. Just wait a little. Then he looked down the street and saw farmers with their horses carrying rice on their backs. Jonoske asked where the farmers were going, and they replied that they were on their way to the fair at the castle. In this case, Jonosuke said, bring everything along here and leave it in my house. I, Saito Jonosuke, need rice for the officials here and there. Carrying this heavy load of rice to go here and there must be very arduous for you. Leave the rice with me and show my receipt to the village chief. His words could not convince the farmers and they left angrily. Jonosuke drew his sword and ordered them to stop. Thus the farmers were forced to carry the rice into his house and return home with his receipt. Jonosuke showed the rice to his wife and boasted, Here are mountains of rice. Take as much as you want. This incident soon became known. Jonosuke reported it just as it had transpired to the officials who investigated the case. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. 
Lord Katsusuge ordered an aide to inform his retired father, Lord Naosuge, of the evidence of Jonosuke's guilt. Upon hearing this news, the retired lord addressed the aide without a word to his wife. You have just heard that Jonosuke is to be executed. How regrettable. He defended the province of Sison in bloody battles like a wild man, risking his life. That was more valuable than all of Japan and all of China combined. He was one of the few whose superior service enabled our comfortable and peaceful lives as Lord and Lord's wife. Jonosuke is a man of incomparable bravery, who distinguished himself multiple times on the battlefield. I have driven him into this wretched existence in which he sometimes had nothing to eat. How could I survive myself if such a follower were to be killed? The couple mourned Jonosuke's fate with tears of resentment in their eyes. Surprised, the aide hastily withdrew and informed Lord Katsusige of Lord Naosige's grief as he had experienced it. How kind you are, said the impressed Lord Katsusige. I have long sought a way to atone for my son's guilt. How could I let Jonosuke be killed? and thereby torment my parents, who hold him in such high esteem. Hurry and inform them that he will be pardoned. Upon hearing this, Lord Nyosage folded his hands in prayer and bowed before the main citadel. He is my own son, and I am so grateful to him for his consideration. Nothing brings me more joy than this news. An aggressive spirit like Prince Akin. Lord Naosig, due to an official matter at the Third Citadel, had to realize that the Lord was not there and no one knew where he was. Even during the second summons the next day, the Lord remained missing. After a thorough search of the castle grounds, the Lord was finally found on the lookout tower. The Prince immediately climbed up and asked the Lord what he was doing there. Lord Naosag replied, For a few days I have been observing the public morals of our clan. Further, he explained, what this means is observing and analyzing passers-by on the street. Unfortunately, the soldiers' morale of the province Shizen has been weakening lately. A man in your position must remember what I say. Most passers-by look down because their spirits have become friendly. Without a violent spirit, however, a samurai's assault cannot have any power. From a man with an unbending heart, who always considers everything sincerely and honestly, one cannot expect him to fulfill male duties. Sometimes one must boast and keep one's spirit aggressive and carefree to become a samurai. Hence it is said that Prince Akinokami, who withdrew his oath to die, Kuranojo, the unrivaled master in sword fighting, served Lord Naosige and was blessed by his extraordinary affection. Lord Pri Kuranojo offered his written oath to follow him to the other world through seppuku upon his death. Later, Kuranojo got into a legal dispute with a farmer who was tried before the clan's council, whom he held responsible for sufficient reasons. Fuming with anger, Kuranojo turned to his lord. How can a samurai who is sacrificed for a farmer follow his lord to the underworld through seppuku? Please release me from my oath. Lord Naosuge sighed. In a legal dispute one wins and the other loses. You are well versed in martial arts but know little about the world. How regrettable. Then he handed him back the written oath. Be constant.